next tutorial. This time I'm dressed up as Carnage from Spider-Man. I've been meaning to do this makeup for quite a while. I mean, since I've done the Spider-Man makeup and I've also done Electro, I thought it's only fitting to do Carnage. And it's also one of those makeups that has been requested quite a few times. So as always, I'll flash the names on the screen now, the first few people that requested it. But the very, very first person that requested it was Evan Schenker, if I'm pronouncing that right. You were the first person, so thank you everyone that requested this look. So if you'd like to see how to recreate this makeup, stay tuned. So as per usual, I'm going to be popping on a ball cap and blocking out my eyebrows. And I'm not going to show you guys how I'm doing it in this video because the video will be super long. So I'll pop links on the screen here to the two tutorials where I teach you guys how to do both those things. So I'm going to do all that and get back to you. Okie dokie, so I've applied my ball cap, blocked out my eyebrows and gone around the edge of my ball cap in about three to four layers of liquid latex just to get rid of the edge. Now I'm going to talk about what I'm going to be doing for the mouth. Now, I don't, I'm not a massive fan of painting on over the eyes, like painting on eyes to your eyes, I'd be close for a look to work. And I'm not a massive fan of painting on a mouth on the neck, just for the fact that, it, I don't know, I just don't necessarily think it's... I know it doesn't work from all angles and it's just not great for me. So what I decided to do is um, I'm going to do the rest of this video as a voiceover because I'm going to elongate my mouth, my chin. So I'm going to cover my mouth in liquid latex, bring out my chin so that I can make the mouth look really big and opened. That way, I don't know, it just makes it look better on profile, I think. So I'm going to start applying some liquid latex to the bottom half of my face using obviously a sponge and 100% undiluted liquid latex. And uh, that's going to be about three coats, and then I'm going to start working on building that up. So I'm going to switch over to a voiceover now. Then I'm going to take some regular masking tape and I'm going to use really little strips and I'm going to go across my mouth of about three, three layers and then vertically down my mouth of about another three layers just to get it really flat and just to really hide my mouth. The reason I did the latex first is because it makes a really nice um, surface for the masking tape to adhere to and it really does stay stuck down. Then I took some more liquid latex and a sponge and I just went over the area once again in the same area that I went before on the bottom of my mouth over the masking tape as well. And then I needed to work on building up my chin, so I took some cotton wool, which is, I just buy in sheets, and I just applied some liquid latex to the mouth area again, and just before it's dried, I can press the cotton wool down on the bottom of my chin, working on making the, the chin as elongated as I possibly can. Not like extremely long, but it needs to be long enough that I can obviously fit two sets of teeth onto it. So the idea is to keep building this up, it's going to take quite a few layers, but just make sure to let one layer dry before adding another layer, then just apply more liquid latex, push the tissue down and just start sculpting it with your hands. It's probably going to take about 10 layers in total. The alternative method is to sculpt a prosthetic, which I'll pop on the screen a tutorial on how to sculpt prosthetics, but I just wanted to make something that is a little bit easier for more people out there that don't have the materials. So there we are, so eventually you'll have a nice long chin that tapers off into a point. So then I took a Stargazer black eyeliner pencil, which doesn't really matter the brand as long as it's easily erasable, and I just used that to trace on the shape of the eyes that I want. So these are quite big, and they're not meant to be symmetrical, they're just meant to be pointy and jagged, and as long as they look overly angry and bear some similar resemblance to, say, Spider-Man, it's all good. Then I took some MAC Basic Red Chroma Cake watercolour and I just used that to paint the top and sides of my head. This is just a base because a lot of the black is going to go over this but it's easier to obviously colour the red first and then black over the top of it so it's not as fiddly but afterwards. Then I took a black Snazaroo watercolour and I used that to paint on the swirls that he has around his eyes and on his body. Now this is a lot easier to go um, for, do this freehand than it is to go off reference photos. As long as you make it not symmetrical and leave some gaps for the red to paint, poke through, you can't really go wrong. It's meant to just have some random spirals going off in different directions and yeah, as long as it looks like, say, it's growing from the bottom upwards, the effect will work. It does also help to use different sizes of brushes with this as well, so some thicker brushes and smaller brushes just so you can glide the brush and the colour around without it having too many breaks. Then I took the red MAC watercolour again and I used that to paint the middle section of the mouth, so not all of it, again it's just to be the area where the teeth are overlapping. Then I took the black watercolour again and a super super sharp angle brush and I used that to start tracing on the shape of teeth that I want. So they're going to be quite long, they don't actually touch the bottom and top set, but they do curve inwards. So make sure that the tips of each tooth does curve towards the centre. Then it's just a case of colouring the teeth in, in the surrounding area with a black watercolour. And then I needed to work on my body, so I took the uh, MAC Basic Red watercolour and I used that to paint all of my chest area and my arms. 
and there's no need to paint my neck with the red watercolour because most of the black is going to cover that. So then I took the black watercolour by Snazaru and I used that to paint on the first the stripe down the centre of the neck and through the centre of the chest and then it has all these different spirals coming off. The only thing to remember really with them is that obviously they can swirl and overlap um, but they need to not be as thick as the middle stripe because that's where like say it's his spine is it's where the blacks originating from so just use different size brushes so some foundation brushes and angle brushes just to do various swirls coming off of this black stripe and I also eventually incorporated the swirls from the body into the head then I took the white chroma cake colour by MAC and I used that to paint on my eyes now I even though I'm going to be covering my eyes in a cloth I do like the eyes to be as hidden as possible so the white is going to be a nice base so if anything does show through it will just be the white then onto the material that I'm going to stick over the eyes. Now this is completely optional, but as I said before, I don't like having looks that have to rely on your eyes being closed for the makeup to work. It just doesn't feel practical to me. So I went to a material stall in the market and I basically I held up loads of different, I must look really daft, but I held up as many different materials to my eyes as I could and I found that this one was the most see-through. So what I did was I took some spirit gum, applied it around the eye area, which is only going to be the eye area. I'm not going to do the entire eye shape that I've painted on. And I just stuck this material down with enough room obviously that I can blink underneath and I just tapered the edges of the material out with a bit more spirit gum. So I did the other eye last because it's going to be a lot easier for me to see. Then I took some black hairspray and I just sprayed the profile of my body. So just the top of my shoulders and just the back of my head just so there's a gradient so it looks like it's peering out of the shadows. And there we go so I blocked out the other eye and that's the look complete. So I really hope this tutorial was helpful to some of you guys out there. If you liked it, please make sure to know the usual. Rate, comment and subscribe and all that jazz. And yeah, so until next time, bye.